All right, the next thing that we're going to do is do a reading of my work. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of background on what this zine is about, I started stripping here in Portland in strip clubs when I was, uh, I think I was either late 23, like almost 24 or 24. Um, and I worked at Sassy's on Morrison, uh, Devil's Point out on Foster Road, Lucky Devil Lounge on Powell, uh, Union Jacks on Burnside, and I also worked at uh, Dante's downtown, and uh, there is where I did Sinferno Cabaret on Sundays, and I still perform there um, a decade later, <laughs> every so often on a Sunday night. Um, and for whatever reason, when I started working, I felt like it was necessary to write down what I was experiencing. Um, working in strip clubs is really funny, like it's quirky, you meet all kinds of bizarre people, you have like horrible experiences and awesome experiences, um, you feel terrible about yourself, you feel wonderful about yourself, and it's just like this really bizarre experience of, of uh, of a workplace, and I started uh, writing in journals and keeping them in a drawer in my dresser. And if I forgot my journal in my purse for the evening, I would like write what happened to me on a cocktail napkin. Um, customers would write me notes, and I would keep them. And I just have like a giant collection of those things. And so I started writing from from all of that stuff, and um, fortunately was able to put together a lot of stories from that, and I'm glad to share that with you this evening. Um, I was looking for a stage kitten to help us out this evening, and I had several people volunteer, and after I filled the position, I had a couple more people saying they were willing to help, one of which is our next reader. She is quite lovely. I've gotten to know her better. Uh, she performs in one of my main productions, which is called Muppets Burlesque which is super fun and ridiculous. Um, and she's just a really sweet, happy-go-lucky person, and she was more than willing to read this evening, and I would like to welcome to the stage Miss Betty Vila. So I've left the this, this zine up here with all of the uh, readings marked for the readers. Are you ready? <laughs> all right, give it up for Betty. spoken since high school, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is called How It All Began. In my early 20s, I lived in a crumbling house on Northeast Michigan Street in Portland, Oregon, with a dirt basement and two roommates. I worked at a pizza palace a few blocks from the house as a cook and counter girl. I was bicycling downtown every weekday morning to attend Portland State University classes part-time. And despite the long ride I made daily, I still had a chubby face and a big butt. My gender studies professor was a slender young man who was still excited about teaching and had a contagious fire in his eyes. He designed each of us to do a five minute presentation on how we thought our gender affected us at work. I wasn't terribly excited to reveal to my cooler classmates that I was a pizza girl, so I sat in the back of the room hoping that at the very least my sweaty armpits would dry off before I had to embarrass myself in front of everyone. A loudly dressed woman I always heard laughing in the front stood up to present. She walked confidently to the front and clucked a giant pair of lucite heels onto the, le onto the lecture podium. The class stopped chattering and sat at rapt attention. Amy was a stripper, she said, and sometimes a dominatrix, when the mood struck her. Men paid to see her dance naked, or for the privilege of cleaning her toilet bowl and fetching her groceries. I need someone like that. She worked at the oldest strip joint in town, Mary's Club. Her gender played an obvious role in her chosen field, and I thought it was courageous of her to be willing to share that with a room full of her academic peers. At the very end of the week, the class got to vote on whose workplace would be the most interesting to visit, and naturally Amy's won by a landslide. An old roommate of mine had stripped, but I'd never been to a strip club. I was both terrified and enthralled by the idea. I figured out that I was sexually interested in both men and women in my teens, and I'd stared at a few 
new female bodies in my life, but never in a setting like this. Mary's is a tiny dark club in downtown Portland that is famous in part for its jukebox, which is located on the stage. The dancers must beat it, change, and play their own songs. There was my classmate, cool as a cucumber, in her loose side stilettos, smiling down at us as she chose her tunes. I was enthralled, and I secretly wanted to know if I could land a gig doing this too. My southern-born, Midwest-raised, good girl conscience was giddy at the prospect of entering beyond the parameters of what society expected of me, but I was still afraid. Plus, I wanted to be fully prepared for such a job. The, woman on the, the, excuse me, the women on the stage were incredible, and I was such a clumsy child, still amazed that anyone would let me have a drink at a bar. So I went online and found a place to take pole dancing lessons, hopped onto the city bus, and off I went. The bus screeched to a halt near a giant old gas station sign on Northeast Towsey Street that read Rocket in big, bold red letters. I hopped off and walked down a side street. I found my way to Be Juicy Studios, an, an unassuming little house with a dance studio in the back. A ridiculously friendly woman who called herself Isis greeted me at the door. During class, my eyes were wide all the way, excuse me, were wide at the way she and other instructors moved, taking us through all the seductive steps, snaking our bodies along the glossy hardwood floors and lifting our weight around a shiny pole. I never allowed myself to be so open and forward and with a public display of sexual expression before. After a few months of classes, I was leaner, standing taller, and looking people in the eye more often. I felt like a different person. For our pole dancing graduation recital, Isis informed us that we'd have the option of performing at an actual strip club. No one would be forced to participate, and we were under no obligation to actually remove any clothing, but we were welcome if we felt comfortable with it. Before we went to the club, we had one final class, a group meetup in which we helped one another decide on stripper names. I had no clue what to call myself, but one of my classmates had a suggestion. Rocket. She said I spun around the pole faster than a rocket, and I did love that old gas station sign around the corner. A Tarantino <coughs> film, Kill Bill 2, had just come out, and one of the minor characters was a stripper named Rocket. She asked one of the main characters to clean up the shitty water on the floors of the strip club bathroom. I liked the three reasons behind the name, so it stuck. Before we went to the strip club, I did my homework. I agonized over what to wear and practiced walking in platform heels around my house. I got online and researched the club. Too freaked out to actually go there in person and check it out before the show. This is how I learned to grow, pushing myself through my fears and daring myself to do something that scares me. I get a rush of adrenaline and happiness when I accomplish doing something scary. Stripping has always felt like a dare, and I still get horrible stage fright every time I perform.